All right, as we begin our unit on uh, motion graphs, we said, uh, as we just looked at it yesterday, that this, this slide is extremely, extremely important, right? It is important. It is vital. It is the most important thing. And you'll even notice on the anchor charts today, that's like the first thing that I put, that you look at the X and Y axis and you determine if your graph is a speed time graph or a distance time graph and I think that after today you're going to understand why we do that and you will see this slide again just a very quick brief overview of a graph you should know this you did this in math already but here going up this way is your y-axis down here going this way is your x-axis and if I follow the directions that I gave myself, the first thing that I should do is determine what type of graph I am working with. And this particular graph happens to be a speed time graph. And we even took time yesterday to practice circling what type of graph it is. And that was all we did on this when we practiced. Um, and the people that are going to get the Nearpod code can actually do that at home if they want to go through and practice that because they're going to have to draw it embedded in theirs as well. And I will attach that um, to the email that I send out to kids today. Um, so we're not going to take time to look at the draw it for you on this because we've already done that portion. When we look at this second picture, uh, we, again, have to remember the most important thing. Raise your hand and tell me what's the most important thing I should do on this graph, Callie. What kind of graph am I doing? And in this one, it is a speed time graph. I think it's important that you label them as the X and the Y axis, just so you don't remember. It gives you good practice. You will see all of this again in middle school. And then I'm going to come up here and say that this is my X axis. This is my y-axis, and luckily for me, it's printed in the right way, right? Because when we plot things, we plot them as x, y. Remember doing that with Miss Levy? Okay. So if I look at this, at one second, the speed of this object, whatever this object is, is 5. At two seconds, the speed is 5. At three seconds, the speed is 5. Four seconds, the speed is five. Five seconds, the speed is five. And six seconds, the speed is five. I'm here thinking, hurry up, Mr. Bullen. But we can't hurry up through that because if we do, we're going to miss something that's very, very important. I'm going to use a little handy-dandy line drawer here. And I'm sure it's going to be not in the right spot because it's done that to me all day when I go back. That's pretty close, but we'll put it down here where it goes. Now, when I look at this, and on my anchor chart, you'll notice the second thing it says after evaluating the plot and plot of is evaluate the graph. I'm looking at this graph. At one second, this car is going five miles an hour. At two seconds, it's going five miles an hour. Three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, and six seconds. It's still going five miles an hour. And the only way that I can label that, oh, I do not want to label it with that. That's a terrible font. Uh, let's get off of that. I'll write. I'll rather write that in there. This is constant speed. The speed does not change. It remains the same. Now, something we didn't cover yesterday that came up in class today. Uh, a big misconception. I'm assuming if it happened in there, it's happening in here, and happening in my last class. This right here is not a drawing of a flat road. It's not a drawing of a flat road. And you're going to understand why I say that when I get to the next one. It's not. That, that just shows me that the car is going the same speed the whole time. And we label this type of graph as constant speed. You guys remember doing that? Feel good about that? All right, so I'm going to clear all of this off. And I'm going to move to the next one. And I'm going to clear all the objects off too. This one's different. We did not do this one yet. This one's a new one, right? Now, again, number one most important thing, Trent. Number one most important.
Find out what type of graph you have. And yes, I will go back to that every time if I have to because it's important. I'm going to determine what type of graph I have, and I realize that with this one, I luckily am still doing speed and time. I was at least kind enough to do those all together to begin with. Now I'm going to graph my data. At 1, the speed was 1 mile an hour. At 2, the speed was 2 miles an hour. At 3, the speed was 3 miles an hour. 4 was 4. And, whoops, I don't want to do that. I'll get at least a dot. And at 5, it was 5. Again, I'm going to use the handy-dandy line drawer because that makes it much easier on me. And it should... Uh, a lot of space there. There we go. Now, number one, I determined what kind of graph I have. Number two, I looked at my data and I plotted the data if necessary. And it was very necessary. Number three, it is time for me to interpret what's going on in this graph. Parker, if I, you and I were in a car and at one second um, we were going one mile an hour, at the very next second we were going two miles an hour, then another second goes by, we're going three, then four, then five. How would you describe the motion of that car? It's going up, it's going the speed is going up. What do we, there's a word that we have for when speed is increasing. You remember that? We are accelerating. So this graph shows me acceleration. If I can get on that. Oh my goodness, drawing on this keypad is not easy. But nonetheless, it's working. I don't know why I have 80s font over there. It's pretty awesome, but it doesn't look good on the screen. This is a graph for acceleration. Be very careful, B. You are not going up a hill in this graph. You are not going up a hill in this graph. That's not what's going on. I know it looks like a hill, but when I interpret the graph and I look as time goes by, the speed gets bigger, my object is going faster as time goes by. It is accelerating. It is accelerating. All right, we're going to now look at our third motion graph of the day. Number one, most important thing, what are we going to do now, Christian? We're going to figure out the uh, what, what type of graph is this? And by doing that, we're going to look at our x and y axis, and we're going to realize that this is a speed time graph. I know that speed is on the y axis. I know x. Or to x. Time is on the x-axis. X is most definitely on the x-axis. Um, and I'm going to label that up here. X and Y. Now I follow the rule number one. Determine what type of graph you have. Rule number two. Look at the graph data. Plot it if necessary. Raise your hand if you think it's necessary that I plot the data. Oh, it's time for some exercise. Put your arm up in the air. And stretch and put your arm back down. There's our movement for now. We're good to go. So let's plot this. At 1, we were going 8 miles an hour. At 2, we were going 6, 2, 6, 3, 4, 4, 2, 4, 2, and 5, 0. Time for the handy dandy line drawer that I'll probably have to move again. That looks better. Now, I've plotted the data. Rule number three, evaluate the graph. Determine what's going on. Melanie, when we first looked at the object at minute one, it was going eight miles an hour. It's going around a track. It comes back by us a minute later and we clock it. It's going six miles an hour. It comes back by us again. It's going four miles an hour. The next time it comes by us, it's going two miles an hour. And then it stops. How would you describe that motion, going from 8 to 6 to 4 to 2 to 0 miles an hour? I mean, slowing down, or as she said, this is 
deceleration. This is deceleration. I think I fixed. Yeah. Although I don't like it to be in red. Uh, let's go with blue. Eh, maybe we'll let. Oh well, whatever. We'll just leave it there for now. Deceleration. Again, we cannot, Keegan, look at this and say. Oh, that's an object going down a hill. You can't. Because logic would say, if I'm going down a hill, I'm going faster. Because I don't know about you, but when I ride my bike versus a flat road up a hill or down a hill, I like downhill. I don't have to do any work. Gravity does the work for me. All right? Do not get confused and think that this is a hill. It is not a hill. Repeating, this is not a hill. I'm going to pause this.